Hello, this is Cuckoo. Today, I want to show you the process behind making that live set that I posted yesterday on this. This is the model cycles, the entry level synthesizer from Electron. And being an, a, a, an entry level synthesizer, I think this packs a lot of features and music and punch. And I, I think it's so much fun to work with. Otherwise, I would never have bothered to make a whole live set. But because I had such a great first impression and I've been thinking about it for a year now to make a live set, and finally I did. Now you can check out my other video for the actual live set, uh, but in this video, I'm gonna go through the songs and take you through the steps that I've, I'm taking when I'm making a song and a set. And also maybe you can uh, see some of the tricks I'm I'm uh, using to uh, in order to make the most out of it. It is kind of limited, but it, at the same time, it's very powerful. And uh, yeah, so without further ado, let me show you how I made this uh, live set. All right, we'll stand here for it to to make the viewing angle a little bit easier for me. Uh, there you go. So here it is, the model of cycles uh, with my set on it. So let's start getting through some songs. Well, first of all, I started out by making just very short snippets of songs and just one pattern really of songs. And that was my embryo for making this whole set. I still have some of the songs uh, that I haven't. Let's go to pattern to back here. This for instance. No, that's the, the ending. This, not used. This is used. This is not used. <laughs> yeah, the boss fight. Yeah, in, in true like video game uh, spirit, I'd say. So, uh, how do I take like a one little snippet and then make it into a whole? Uh, song well I don't know there's no shortcuts really for it might be a good idea to start out like that with a short snippet it might also be a better idea to to um, to make the whole song um, uh, in one go because uh, I got so used to listening to those short snippets so they become kind of a holy the holy grail it should sound like this and whenever I started to change it it started to sound like something else. But in order to make it into a set, I had to change them into something else because they were designed to be short snippets and that was like the the, the, the actual uh, entity of what it was. It was short snippets. But to break out of that habit of making short snippets, you need to think a little bit bigger and you need to embrace uh, a, a thread that goes from one place to another uh, over time and it might be that that short little snippet that is working so well on its own might be hindering you and stopping you to to create a flow that is going over a longer period of time so my first um, challenge was kind of break out of that and, and think that I, I could turn this into a whole song rather than just making that little snippet represent one place of the song necessarily. So that was my first challenge. But let's, let's get into one of the songs. Let's take the first song here. I, I put them all in banks. Press pattern, bank, one, uh, A, B, C, D, E, F. So currently I have some leftovers on bank F. But I put my first song here. I really like to, to work linearly. So I put one song here, uh, used it up. And maybe I have some space over here now. So I could put like a, a couple of transitions here and then uh, move over to the next uh, bank, which is a longer song, uh, using up almost all of the banks there or the patterns, having uh, uh, almost nothing left there. And on this bank C, it turned out I used roughly half of the patterns there. So 
Yeah, let's go to song number one, pattern number one. See what it is. This is like an intro. That's pattern number two. Pattern three, four. Yeah, let's see if I actually have. I'm moving on. Yeah, actually, this is a clear example of a, a, a song that was just a little tone. The tone sounded like this. So how do I make this into a song? I made this to be like a wake-up call, uh, an alarm clock uh, uh, tone. And then I liked it so much. So I wanted to make it into a song. So how do I do that? Well, I need to kind of feel it out. So I wanted this to be the intro and the ending. And I'm asking myself this question. What do you want to hear next? And I wanted to go into kind of a groove, start out the song, like the set with a, a nice little groove and not too hardcore, but fun and fresh. One, two, three, hit it. And then go into this. So let's check out what I've got going on on the different uh, six tracks here. And what you hear on the pads is not necessarily what is being programmed on each of the tracks because every step can sound different. Every step can load in a different engine and every step has the opportunity to be tweaked to your heart's con content and, uh, and be made to sound very different. So one example, if we uh, check out, let's see. Check out track number one there, see what's there. If I press it, it's a tone. So it's just kind of a bass, a bass going on there, like a little touchy bass. But you can hear that already there. I'm gonna press uh, the rec button to, to show the grids here. On the second trig there, there is some, there's like a doo. So what I've done there, just on this trig alone, is to set up the LFO. You can see the LEDs are, are red here. It means that on this trig, I've done something to these two. So what I've done is to set, set up the LFO to change the pitch. And the LFO is this value that's going up and down in different ways. And momentarily on just this uh, trig, create like a very aggressive vibrato uh, affecting the pitch and also a shorter decay or longer. I'm doing it later on as well. And this one too and the last one. Boing. So the last one there is even maybe a longer note. So that, that's the bass. There's nothing weird, it's using the sound that is there. And uh, also I want you to know that if you press function and track, you can go into this little menu, say, and, and pitch the whole keyboard. Something like that, you get the idea. And many times I record live, I press rec and play, and record live. Uh, and that will be my kind of starting point. And then I go in here into the grid view and start to mess around with the timing, um, change the notes, change uh, like um, the parameters per step, ch uh, shorting in the notes, making it like carefully just crafting that. Because if I play this live, dum dum dun dun dum, like, First of all, it sounds very static because it's the same volume, the same, uh, uh, yeah, the same settings on every note. But if I go in here 
and adjust every note just make that one a little shorter and uh, uh, next one a little longer maybe uh, bring up the shape on one note to to have an accent and so forth and also uh go out here to this main menu pressing this i can cycle between the note velocity and length and being very careful about that like velocity 72 there velocity 58 on the first one velocity 57 velocity 62 velocity so i'm nudging the velocity just to make it a very careful uh melody there so but it's still still it's just the same sound so let's move on to track number two and see how i've sold that uh, I'm going to mute this. You can hear clearly that there are two different sounds uh, being played. The kick and the snare drum. And what I've got loaded on this uh, track is the snare drum engine. But if I go here uh, on the in the grid view, take a look at this. I can see that this one is lighting up, meaning I've actually changed the sound engine into another sound engine. I can I can manually change the sound en engine on every trigger if I want to. I can also go in there into the preset menu and load in a totally different sound for just that uh, trig. And I had a kick drum that I've, I've been using over and over again. So if I were to make a second sound there now, just by placing the trig, it's going to be the sound that is on the on the channel. But if I press and hold, press the little uh, preset menu there, and in this mode, I start scrolling around, can go into my little uh, folder there, take, for instance, Cappy, which is my clap sound. Now there's a clap there. I could put it, I can hold, copy, delete it, put it there, paste. And I can keep going with these. I could have a totally different sound there. Totally different sound there. Another sound here. Another sound here. And <laughs> and that might it was a bit stale so I'm gonna funk it up with some uh, LFO I'm gonna set the LFO to the pitch and make the LFO speed faster on just that trig and then we'll go fun and maybe even change the color and the shape a little bit to make it less pronounced <laughs> uh, more yeah maybe bring down this more clean FM maybe uh, change the decay on this sound and maybe make it a very short sound Yeah, how about that? And maybe also sending delay, sending uh, reverb on this very trick. So now you can see I'm lighting up a lot of, of these parameters. And this is what I do all the time, like per trig, uh, changing everything, making sure it's in the flow of, of the sound of the music. And now suddenly it went from that dry sounding sound, maybe take this down a bit more, Maybe take it a little bit shorter. And now, since I'm using the LFO, sending that to pitch, the LFO is currently not synced, so it's going to be a very uh, um, uh, unpredictable what it's going to sound like to that. And that is something that I find a lot of fun. So I do this sometimes. Make a little accent that is hard to predict. Now I went up. Do you? Do you? So see you next time. 
went up again. Maybe if I change the alpha speed to slower. To re. Yeah. See you next time. Two. It started off. Yeah, it's different. So this stuff you can do. Uh, and also something that I use, if I'm going to jump ahead a little bit, something that I use when I'm performing is that I can mess up a lot of stuff and then reload the pattern from the last saving point or the last temporary saving point. Like now, if I do that, all of these tricks that I put in here are going to be gone. But function and pattern, it says reload pattern there. Boop. Now we're back to original. I do that a lot. I find it a lot of fun to do. Yeah, so let's listen to the, the next track, or maybe these two together, just to see. Function and press. One thing that I do all, all the time when I'm programming sequence is to make sure I'm not um, putting too many trigs on the same beat. Um, sometimes I do it, but generally I, I try to space it out a little bit so that there's not like too many overlapping tricks that's happening on the same time. So here is like a balance between the very static drums and the kind of jumpy bass. So a lot of times you can hear tricks going in between the drums and it's just a way to express uh, playfulness uh, that I like. Uh, it's just part of my style, I guess. So, dum, dish, dum, dish, dum, dum. like the drums are very static. And how to make it less static is not necessarily to change the drums, but to change what happens around the drums. And because of that, it's all sounding very, very fun, and much fun. So let's check out track number three. Can you get these? Hi-hats. Okay, so here, the, the higher track. If we take a look at the higher track, we can see there's a lot of tricks here, a lot of tricks. But yeah, when we press play, uh, we can barely hear any of them. It's like very sparsely placed. So this is one technique that I use all of the time on electron devices in general. It's the page button there, when you're in grid mode and editing, you're sw switching what page you're on. If you're not, if you hold it down, uh, you, activate, you activate the fill tricks. So tricks that have uh, a conditional fill mode, uh, they will be played when holding down this. So I, I use that a lot in a way, there's like a, a way to just kind of go between two different energy levels. So here, if I press and hold this now, you can hear there were two things we, we could definitely hear. There's much more hi-hats. I'll mute the other one. Much more activity there. And also the ringtone, the original ringtone, that also came uh, into play. And on which track is the ringtone being played? It's on these two. So let's check out, check these out. Are they even playing anything? No, they're not being played at all, unless. I press this button. So if I press and hold one of the notes here, I'm moving forward a bit quickly perhaps, but um, I can see this is lighting up. It means I've put a, a conditional trig there. Let's just wiggle it ever so slightly to check uh, the menu here. It says indeed fill. This has a fill condition on it. It means the trig is only going to be played when uh, the, the fill button is played, uh, pressed. How about this? Yeah, fill. How about this? Yeah, fill. So all of these, in fact, both of these, they're only being played when you're pressing fill. But the hi-hats has a mixture 
uh, stuff that is always being played, stuff that is only being played when I'm pressing fill. Now you can potentially reverse this too. You can uh, not play tricks when you press fill. It's you have both options. And right now, you can see this. This first one, it's a fill trig. The second one is a regular trig. First one here is a fill trig. Second one, also a fill trig. And and when holding it down, you can say I, I changed the decay on that one, making it a short hi-hat. Oops, I destroyed it. So I'm going to uh, reload it to get it back. Okay. <laughs> And that's a way to, to just have like a one finger way of making an accent or going into a more um, energetic or less energetic, whatever you set it up to do, which is a lot of fun. So let's take a look at these notes. No, it's just, just regular. Say. Nothing special, just notes. How about this? This is a fun one because... Um, the chord, the chord engine is very, very useful. It's a polyphonic chord engine. I'm not sure how many notes you can play at the same time, but many. And you can cycle up, cycle down in the register. It's like, like that. Uh, it's very, very nice. And it has a very like background kind of uh, smooth quality to it. Okay, so if we only listen to the chord, and currently, uh, I don't think there is a way to preview a trig. Like they they created, they updated all of the professional lines to have like a preview. You can press yes to to preview a trig that you're holding. Currently, there is none here, so there's a lot of making a change, playing, and waiting for it to, to play, to hear it. Uh, and especially with the chord engine, it can be a little bit tedious, but it's worth it because it's so much fun. So right now, I'm changing the color, I think. Let's see, that one, and then this one changing color, this one back to normal. So I'm not doing this, I'm just, or something like that. And the second note though, changing color, what's happening is, um, so I'm doing that, which is a, a nice, very nice touch. In order to change the sound quality of the chord, it's sweep. Whereas going through a different, what is it, harmonics, um, like morphing through different wave tones? I don't know, sure. Yeah. And the shape on the chord engine is the actual chord. So this is a minor add nine, major. And you could change that per trig, as with everything. But with the chord engine, engine in particular, I wish they found a way to kind of preview a trig. There is no yes button here, so not sure how you would do it, uh, but I'm sure if the designers put their heads to it, that should be a way to to preview a trig. Uh, how would I do that? How would I do that? Ding, no. Yeah, maybe tap the BPM, it's a bit counterintuitive. Press a function, no. Retrig, retrig, no, path and track. I think maybe I'll be tempted to use this because it's not used in, in the tracker. 
it by holding a trig, press that. That would be so sweet if, if I could just uh, check what it sounds like. But that's just my personal uh, little opinion there. And let's move on. I'm going to re reload. Cool. So what I've done here, again, you can hear the same trick there, like uh, momentarily, uh, LFO speed to, uh, to pitch. And sometimes I even like the trig is actually there. And I'll let the trig uh, linger. And then I create like a, an LFO trig afterwards. You can make silent trigs with function and press. And they create trigs that are actually not triggered. They're not triggering a note, but they do trigger all of the parameters that you change on that note. So for instance, you can have like a long tone that only triggered once. And then later on, you can manipulate that note with different uh, manipulations. <laughs> Uh, uh, different parameters that changes over time. And that's also fun to do, I think. It's straightforward. Different chord. Yeah, there's nothing weird with this. Everything is just perfectly normal here. And... I can... You can select when to fire up that the melody there and how long and yeah it's playful pattern number two so that was an intro kind of getting into the mood now we're gonna land solid here so you can hear a lot of times I'm cutting in with a little surprising uh, chirps and and ways of just throwing everything a little bit on its side, like tilting the whole uh, vibe a little bit, and that's just a a bit of my playful style, I guess. Uh, I like to do stuff like that. A ding, a little clong. Now these. Yeah. <laughs> So I can select tracks by just pressing them, but I also fire a note. If I hold track, I select it silently. Still. Yeah. So if we check out check this out again here on the on the sequencer. So right there, we're triggering a little ding. So what is that? You can see I'm going into the preset menu. I have a preset that I made called Pingo One. Which is that sound? And here, another uh, kind of sound. Is that also, yeah, it's another uh, parameter. It's another preset called tubular. Yeah. <laughs> and one thing that I do a lot when I'm coming into this, I made like a a groovy little thing, but I feel like I want to mess it up and tilt it a bit on its side and create some fun chirps and stuff. Maybe I get an idea, like like here. If I listen to this now. I, I want to create like a do. So how do I do that? Can I do it right here? I could. What I do in that case is move to an empty pattern and just take any track like this uh, track clear and uh, I create that sound so in that case do do we can make it in some different ways let's start up the percussion engine which is kind of designed for that type of sounds change the color that volume sweet something like that could be nice delay Reverb. 
And with with all of the onions, you always need to uh, kind of make up your mind whether you wanted to just use the decay as dictating the life span of the sound, or if you press this, which is going to be holding it for as long as you hold it, like with no delay, for instance, then I'm going to turn this off. Maybe I could even spice it up with an LFO, hold the LFO, send it to pitch. And now it's unpredictable. How about if we want to predict it, want to go from top to low? Well, uh, then first of all, what we need to do is to press function and LFO and press this little checkbox. Uh, which is going to restart the the LFO every time you press it. So it's predictable. And then we go to LFO again and maybe change the LFO to another type. For instance, a high value to low. That. It's continuing. So we can change, we can check this one out, the envelope. That could be something, just running once and then... Maybe, maybe the other one was fun after all. Maybe make it faster even. Is that a good idea? Let's see. <laughs> and this is me, this is me, uh, like, all the time when I'm making it, it's just like, is this fun? That's the question lingering in my head. It's like, oh, that's, that was cool. And then after cool comes the counter question. It's like, is this fun? And then I kind of tend to go towards fun. Like this, maybe? How about that? That's pretty cool. Yeah. And now I made this sound here on a totally different pattern. So what I'm going to do is save it. I'm going to go to the uh, function preset menu. Navigate to place. This is, this is percussion or effect. It's effect, right? I've uh, made C effects, which is mine. And here uh, I press function to bring up the menu. Save a preset, clear the name, give it a name, I'm going to call it uh, Poi, yeah, it's suddenly, I call it Poi Poi, okay, that's a good name, and press, you want to save the preset? Yes, I do. So now we save this preset, ready to recall in, in, in any place. So I'm going to head over to the pattern again. Boom. That's where I want it. Uh, but on the track. Let's, I got these set up to be left and right. So I'm going to fire it off on this right track. Boom. Okay. Like there. Let's see. Press this. Go to C effects and it was called Poi Poi. Press it. It's loaded. Okay. How about that? That was fun. I sent some reverb and delay as well. <laughs> Maybe more reverb and uh, also. Um, Velocity down. Yeah, that's fun. So, so this is the way I work all of the time with all of the tracks. Uh, I, it's yeah. I don't make a difference. Yeah, I'm not sure what I'm trying to say here. <laughs> Let's listen. So that's the lead uh, sound. It's 
So this is the way I rehearse, like trying to make out what notes I want to play. And then when I've got it in my fingers, I press record and I make a take again as with the previous uh, pattern. And then I go in here and refine it. And when you're recording a live take, press rec and play, and it flashes the, whether you're uh, currently uh, uh, quantizing the notes or if it's unquantized. A lot of the times I record quantized if I want to record unquantized and quantized later, or uh, it's just a different vibe that requires no quantization, I press rec and play, and rec while holding rec, I press play again to to uh, toggle between quantized and unquantized, like so. So yeah, let's move on to the next pattern. By now, by now you kind of know everything about the te techniques that I use. So from here on, it's all about uh, the music. Like, how how do I approach the music? Like, I come from this. It's fun world, and then I want to build up something to a different place, and I want to go to a more spacious place. And uh, started off with a pew, pew, and uh, which one and which? I, I don't even know what track I put it. Let's uh, mute something. Still just a bass. More epic reverb. There you go. So on this track. I fired off a preset called to disco, yeah? To disco, you need to fire that one off. Uh, I think actually I, I based that on one of the presets uh, on the machine. Uh, quite a, a lot of nice presets, actually. So it's kind of a tom, a tom drum, but as you can see by all of these red adjustments, I've changed it. Oops, and now it's gone. <laughs> Uh, function reload. And with this melody, that's actually a small reference to Eric Satie. Uh, which is, uh, yeah. I just suddenly I found myself going into a, into that direction. I, f I felt like, well, this is so much fun. I'm going to keep a little reference there to Eric Satie, uh, a well-known composer, pianist, uh, uh, interesting, beautiful music. And if you listen carefully there, the first time it was playing and the second time yeah. So what I've done there is also to use the conditional trigs and say that the first time play this trig, second time press that trig. But to my ear it sounds like there was the same timing on both of those trigs and you cannot put two tricks on the same trig. So how did I do that? Let's check it out. See. We can see there are two notes here that are very, very close together. So if I press one of them, I can see that chance is here and it says one of two. So that means play the first time out of two repetitions, but not the second one. If I press and hold this, you can see there's a, a bit more there. It says pl play the second one 
out of two repetitions, but not the first one. And we also see the swing and nudge knob. What I've done there is just nudged it all the way to the left, which means it's going to be awfully close to actually being triggered exactly on that trig. Not, not precisely, it's a tad afterwards. So that's a way to kind of make alternating trigs on the same, seemingly the same trigs. Let's listen carefully and see if we can spot that the sing second time it's playing, it's actually playing a tad late. Yeah, here we go. That should be on time, the second one. It's so close to the actual trig, so you can't really hear it unless it's very rhythmically uh, revealing. So that's a trigger use, a, a trig, that's a trig trick I'm using sometimes. Okay, move on. Kind of the same as the first one. Next. Which is kind of a cool um, build up place. And basically, what I'm doing is just the same, the same technique, just listening, thinking, what do I want to hear? What, what sounds do I want to fit in here? And also, like fitting in stuff in between. And uh, we've got six different tracks here, but sometimes maybe you want more. Um, in order to do that, we need to be a bit uh, like crafty when it comes to fitting in stuff in between the other notes to make it sound bigger and more. And that, that the riser there, let's see how I made that. Let's see on which track it is. Not that. That that's pretty cool actually. <laughs> it's just a good sound. Yeah, how about over here? So it's it's a sound. Let's see. Let's see where it is. It's, uh, yeah, actually, as you can see here, this is not lighting up. So that is just a change of the current sound in this position. So what I've done is to take the LFO and send that to a uh, color, which in this case is the uh the pitch of the modulator of in the fm chain so basically what i'm doing is just more so so in order to find that uh i was just looking around like and trying to to get an idea of how to make a cool build up there and uh, just try really to to not have any boundaries of what's right or wrong but FM synthesis it can be really crafty <laughs> Same there uh, later on. It's the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Let's move on. Let's see. And that, the siren there, you can hear. That's. this it 
It's beautiful, isn't it? Well, it's a, a bet. It's a tone, right? Yeah, the tone engine. So what I've done is take the color down to to, um, to zero, right? Or the like the lowest value. To have this kind of scrappy kind of broken um, modulation and then use the LFO again play it very slowly I bet it's like one or something yeah one and send it to pitch in this case and lots of reverb and lots of delay and just shape the sound until you hit it's like good and what I do when I play live, let's do this. I can isolate the sound if I know uh, where it is and then start messing with the parameters live. It's a, it's a, it's a real nice vibe, I think. Uh, but in the heat of uh, the midst of being in a performance, uh, you might not always remember where all of the si uh, sounds are placed and which, uh, which track they're on or something. And then I continuously see myself using the track button. So when I press track in the middle of a set, n when I'm not in great view and I press it, it means I control all of the tracks at the same time. So when pushing track and change the color. I, I change this parameter on, on all of the tracks at the same time. And then immediately afterwards, I press function pattern, which means, which means reload. I'm moving back to where it was. So that's, a, that's like a fast way to create mayhem and then move back to known territory. And as you could hear, many of the drums were not affected by me pressing track and color. And in this case, it's because they were launched from presets. And the presets that are launched, they're overridden. Uh, yes, you can say they're, over, they're overriding the control all, but only at the trigger moment. If there's a long note, that uh, that is a preset that Im immediately after it's been triggered and while it's being held this will start to take effect too so if you press if you launch like a long preset uh, you will also control it after the initial trig cool yeah go in there and now i'm trying to make like an atmospheric end uh, on this song uh, and timing one last launch of that initial ringtone. You're pressing this, queuing up a pattern change, and getting ready to press stop. So now I know that uh, we're done. So that's the first song. And really, uh, what I've done with all of the songs is just a repetition of the same te technical side of things, but it's all about. Uh, composition, uh, creativity, working with these. Uh, it, it, it is a limited platform. It has six little uh, tracks. They're monophonic. And you, you need to be creative in order to make uh, the music you want. And also, let yourself uh, embrace the strengths and peculiar nature of this particular instrument. Uh, because if, if you're trying constantly to work against it and do something else, uh, chances are you might not quite get there, but rather try to explore it for what it is and see where you can pick out some weird and lovely, uh, fun tones and then just exploit it. Okay, next 
track. I'm not going to go through all of them, but let's take a look at some of the other tracks here. Let's see. I think this synth has a tremendous bass. Uh, there's numerous ways to get out some very good bass. And like, listen to the bass here. Let's see. That's the kick drum. That's a bass and kind of uh, tom drums. And uh, in this case, I'm loading a patch for the bass. This one, and I call it Bash It. Let's take a look at this sound called Bash It somewhere. I'm gonna go here, maybe, and uh, load Bash It. Oops, function preset. And it's probably here. Bash it. Okay, there we go. And one, one thing that I do all the time is I want to go down on the keyboard. I can pitch the whole sound down if I want to, but function track, go there in the keyboard, press there to change the 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 where the range of the keyboard by holding down I do it per octave okay so so which engine do you think I'm using here check it out it's the kick drum the kick drum engine is very powerful when it comes to bass. Let's see. If I reset this, uh, track, clear, reset this sound, there's the kick drum. Yeah, so you start out like this and you feel like, okay, let's work with the kick drum. Volume, shape, sweep, contour. But the moment you press this button, which means you, you're going to hold it, you're going to, um, yeah, there's more to the kick drum than just kick drum. So let's, let's continue looking for sweet spots. I'm going to go up on the keyboard again. Let's see. Okay. I'm going to take the decay away. Sweep. Just a little bit. Shape. Yeah, and uh, volume distortion. I might be, I might clipping. I'm not sure. This is going to have a, an impact on the sound. And then a bass could be like this. Or maybe the opposite. So just by exploring the engines, you can find more uh, uh, creative use for the different engines. Like if we if we clear this, take another engine. Let's take the the percussion engine. In the beginning, sounds kind of you know simple. Do the same thing there. Hold it, and then you kind of reveal a lot about the engine. Take the LFO, take the random LFO, send it to stuff and just try it out. Slower. And when we've got mayhem, send it something else. Sweep, contour, shape. <laughs> 
Call it, yeah, that's cool. And if one thing with the now I'm using the random LFO, and if I make it really slow. And function and LFO setup reset. Now it's going to reset every time I press it, which is going to lead to a, a different trig a color every time I press the key. Which is a lot of fun because it's it's weird. Yeah, there you go. Be creative. Be creative. I'm gonna reload this and uh, what's what's more? And you might hear the claps that I'm using. Some someone commented like and and told me I should tell Electron to make a clap engine. But to be honest, I think it can make some pretty good claps already. So let's take a look at one of the claps that I, I'm using. And I base that on uh, on one of the claps that's already in here and tuned it, changed it a little bit. So let's see how it's made. Uh, function preset. I'm using, let's see, I'm calling it Cappy. So, sounds kind of clappy to me. So, let's see. And also, remember that if it's not sounding perfectly like a clap on its own, it's in the context uh, where it's making sense. So let's take off the reverb for now and investigate. So, uh, first of all, engine. It's the chord engine. Can you imagine? This is the chord engine. It doesn't make any sense. Why? And how have we made this into a clap? Let's check out the LFO. The LFO is, is using the random LFO. So it's sending random uh, values at, at the highest speed, 2K. If I slow it down, we can hear how it's working. Decay. So, uh, and what what shape is being used here? Uh, unison, unison four, which means it's a monophonic tone times four, where uh, you've spread it away to be detuned with the color. And in order to make a noise out of this. What's being done is to, to just fire it off with a very, very fast randomized pitch. Oops. Until it approaches clap land. Yeah, so let's check this out. That sounds cool too. And w the good thing with the chord engine is that it has this built-in uh, waveform changing thing. <laughs> so you can kind of go into different starting points of, of that noise. And some place there might be very close to a clap. That one's cool. And then reverb. It's pretty good. Creative, creative way of making a clap. And uh, I find it very useful. So of course, you could probably make a specific clap engine and make it easier, but it's possible. You just need to explore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's see here.
Okay, this sound. Uh, let's see, this is a rising sound. I'm gonna isolate this. By now, I, I think you get an idea of how it's made. Uh, it's a long tone using, uh, is it tones? I think so, yeah, tone. It's a slow rising envelope. I'm using the envelope LFO and uh, using it on the very slowest speed and I'm sending that to pitch. And while it's being played, I'm uh, sequencing stuff uh, on the track. So let's see, we start here. Next. That whole sequence was just one note that was being triggered once. And then along the way, I'm just going bonkers with parameter changes and uh, per trig making like very uh, interesting and uh, crazy changes to the pitch and to color to synthesis. Let's see if we have anything else to say. Now, I think we're gonna have take the last song because it's something I wanna touch upon. This. I just wanted it to be a chill song. And one of the things I made was a long melody that was spanning over a longer time that uh, like 64 tricks can house. So let's see, I start the melody here, I think. That's one, and then the second. First of all, in order to make longer melodies uh, in this uh, square format, uh, there's a number of things you can do. One is to to play that melody uh, track on half speed. And you can do that by pressing function and page. Right now, different pages have a different scaling. So this one, being played back at normal speed. This one, half speed, half speed, half, half, normal. So all of the tones are being played back in half tempo. That means they're twice as long in, in playback length, but they have the same number of tricks, so it's making it harder to, to play uh, fast notes uh, because it's essentially being stretched out. So in this case, I want to focus on this and turn the other ones off. Um, and same thing here, I was rehearsing, doing my best to, to create the notes and uh, then recording it live and then adjusting them afterwards. But some of them, let's see. First of all, I was recording without uh, quantization, but sometimes I wanted kind of fast note. Let's see if I find a better example. How about this? Yeah, that's a good example. Uh, it's kind of quick notes that like long, short, short, long, long, short, long, long. So what I've done there is to, this one is almost on the grid. This one is heavily delayed. And this one is kind of delayed. So I've pushed these two together in order to make a quicker note succession there. And you can also hear I'm changing the quality of the note. Um, not so much the volume and the velocity, but in order to uh, give the impression of different velocities, 
uh, typically it's not the volume that changes, but the different, the modulation is heavier or or less pronounced, and the decay is maybe shorter on some notes. So if we press and hold it, I can see what I've changed. Uh, nudge, delay, reverb, and shape. Oops, I and this decay contour shape decay contour shape decay shape decay contour shape so all of these notes decay contour shapes i've uh, and also i think the velocity to some degree no 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 velocity change but And this one, shape, shape, okay, contour. So all of them, I'm changing. Like, listen to this. Doesn't that sound much more like a more careful note than changing the volume does? Maybe on, on this one. So we have all of these things we could do per note in order to make it kind of dynamic. So I'll end together. And that transition up there, uh, I was trying to do do. Uh, to play it live, but uh, of course afterwards uh, nudging everything into place. Yeah, so now you know everything that I know about how to create a, a set on the Electron model cycles. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, and if you found it helpful or inspiring in any way, I encourage you to um, stop by my Patreon and maybe throw in some support I appreciate that very much, everyone doing that. Maybe I, while talking, I should... I should have this sweet music in the background. Well, thank you for joining in. This is Cuckoo, coming right at you, live from Oslo, in Norway. Thank you so much. For checking in. I hope seeing you soon in a different video. Always be curious. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining in. Uh, I love creating these videos and I hope to do it more and more and more and create more and more interesting videos and uh, challenge myself in how to express myself and is what I do, and uh, I love it. Peace out, everyone. Hope seeing you soon.